Welcome to Toe to Toe, a podcast for realtors where you'll witness a battle of opinions about topics affecting your real estate business. There are many ways for realtors to achieve success. The secret is to find which approach will work for you. Now, always in your corner, here are your hosts, Jen Mertland and Monica Weekly. Welcome to another episode of Toe to Toe. I'm Jen Mertland, and I'm here with my constant opponent, Monica Weekly. <laughs> Each episode, we choose a different real estate topic to battle about, and we go toe to toe, arguing our differing opinions. But you know, our number one goal is always this, to help you find a path that feels authentic to you. Because when you build your business based on a style and a set of standards that truly fits who you are, that's when your business will thrive and you will love what you do. Yes. Right. All right. So during today's throwdown, Jen and I will be duking it out over this question. Should you, as a listing agent, allow multiple showings at the same time? Mm. Should Mm -hmm. you allow multiple showings at the same time? And Jen, you know this always gets that first time seller caught up when they've approved a showing and then another one comes in and they don't know what to do. Should they approve it? You always get that phone call, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. But I actually have a two word answer for you today. Oh, let's hear it. Hell yes. Oh, hell yes. The girl of few words, but such impact. I love it. <laughs> hell yes. Well, interestingly enough, and I don't think this has really ever happened in the history of Toe to Toe podcast, Jen. You and I actually like really agree on this one, so there's not going to be a yeah. fight, but we are going to bring value, I think, through the course of this podcast to talk about pros and cons we and watch out. I disagree, but I think we're both on the same like... There's a little bit of a spectrum when we agree, but I think we're both a hell yes on this. Yeah, we're a hell yes. I mean, of course, why is that? Like, what's the number one benefit in your mind? Well, I mean, for the se- from the seller standpoint, I always my instinct is to start there. It it creates a sort of an auction effect. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. that what you're thinking? Yeah, the competition piece. Like, oh my gosh, this is a hot property. Even if those are the only two showings you got on it all week. Right. Yeah, especially if those are the only two showings you've got on it, you have on it all week. Well, and I think too, like when a bunch of people are there at the same time, it, it creates a sense of urgency in the buyers. But, but recently, and by recently, I mean in the last like couple of years, I've noticed that that urgency or that auction effect that we're trying to get has actually created like a negative impact on the buyers where they will actually say, I don't want to, I don't want to be in a bidding war. Yeah, because they're, they're so they're familiar. Negotiate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, who cares? Yeah, you're right. You're right. That happens. And I find that that creates this sense of urgency that causes people to do things before they've thought it through. Yeah. And we get buyers backing out or making ridiculous offers and then having major buyer's remorse the next day or week or, you know, what what happens is people are just trying to win the contract, right? So they'll do anything. And then they're like, shit, now we have to live with this, right? So, well, I mean, that's like a whole nother soapbox on soapbox on how most of these contracts around the United States are written to let the buyer back out basically for anything and they don't hold them accountable at all. We could go on a soapbox about that. Oh, we sure could. (laughs) Do you think that there are agents out there that are saying, Hey, all we have to do is win this contract, then we can deal with these other things. But you, you, we need to show up in a way that gets you this contract, and then we can negotiate down through inspections. Do you think agents say that? I mean, I th- I don't know. I think probably yes. I think there's a lot of I think there's a lack of training in the industry as a whole, and we've talked about this. Like you almost- do. <laughs> Almost every, a consistency in the training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like every episode. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Jen's rants on Toe to Toe podcast. Right. But I mean, certainly there's agents that that say that. And then there's also some that say, you know, don't don't ask for anything. And really, actually, the first, I mean, I've been in business for a long time, done a lot of deals. Mm -hmm. And one time this happened to me that... The set, I was representing the buyer and they, we were in multiple offers. We got it, but then the seller didn't respond to any inspection requests at all. 
like during the time allotted and then it voided the contract and they took another one. <gasps> so by, by not responding, that voided the contract. It was oh totally God. legal according to our broker. Oh. I was like, what? what? Responding. I mean, you, you can imagine that I was very pleasantly and unpleasantly persistent in getting a response. And I literally had no idea that that could happen. It was nuts. Oh my gosh. So, I mean, you also, if you have sellers and agents too, there are parts of the contract that if it, the deal feels like it's mm-hmm. going to go down, they mm-hmm. can make it go down or if they you get it, it. You know I mean, it's crazy. Okay. So multiple showings, same time, obvious benefit is to create competition, auction effect, as you say, certainly also is efficient for your sellers. I mean, great for them to only have to be out of the house for an hour for a couple of showings. And they're done. The the watch outs are getting buyers to act in a way that they might not otherwise want to act because they are competing, right? Um, So too, if you have a house that is very small or not conducive to a large number of people, then maybe it will feel smaller if there's people there mm -hmm. or if you have a driveway issue. Yes. It'll be exacerbated through multiple cars. Yeah. Great point. I love that. I love that. And certainly another thing to pay attention to is if you are the listing agent, make sure you talk through this with your sellers so they know how to respond. Jen and I were talking before we started recording that there's always a conversation that happens with the sellers when they've accepted a showing and then another one comes in and they don't know whether to say yes or no, or they deny it thinking they can't you deny it. Yeah, that's what they do. And so then you got to backtrack and it costs you more time. So that again, I think that's a theme in all of our podcasts is setting expectations. And communication. And communication, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Well, I think let's talk about the down. Yeah, we, well, we talked about the downfalls. Are there any other downfalls? I think from a buyer's perspective, let's talk about multiple showings. So I think from a buyer's perspective, it, it can be difficult when there's multiple people there because mm-hmm. they – when I've been showing, they just feel anxious and Mm -hmm. Lord knows they're all anxious already. Already anxious. And they're paying attention to that other buyer. They're not looking at the house. They're like trying to listen to what the buyer says or whatever. They're just off their game. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so they might not even see the house for what it is. Mm -hmm. Be like, I don't like it. Let's move on. Or what if you, oh, this has never happened. I don't think, but you could overhear something that the, mm-hmm. the other buyers are pointing out and you're like, oh, I didn't even think about that. Right. And well, I did. we did talk to a lot of agents too and they said that people, eight other agents were asking them to wait outside while the buyer, while they showed their buyer. What? <laughs> the nerve. The I mean, nerve. I've done it before. <laughs> Have you said, can you wait outside? Yeah, and they usually do. Oh I mean, my gosh. You know, you might as well ask. If you don't ask, you won't get. And that is today's lesson. Well, there you go. Is they say no. I say, no, I'm going to start on another floor or something like that. But That's like, usually what we try to do is like, let's go downstairs. Let these guys wrap up. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not all follow each other. Yeah. No need for that. <laughs> Did we miss any points on this? Well, I think the only thing is if you're the buyer's agent to again, ask your buyer in that consultation process, hey, if we run into a situation where I can, I can see that there's another showing at that time, would you like me to avoid that time, let you know, or do you not care? Because if, if I don't ask, I'm going to assume we're going to go and I could be setting that buyer up to feel uncomfortable. So right. just something else to do in your consultation, I think making sure you understand how your buyers feel about that. Yeah. I mean, I probably wouldn't ask. I would prep them, especially in like today's market. Like this is going to happen. It's likely we're going to be there with other people. Yeah. And if, we, if we're not, then we're going to lose the house yeah. because we will be under contract. Yeah. Right. If we wait too long. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's most markets. I mean, not, I guess from the agents that we've talked to, that's a lot of markets. I mean, you would know your, your individual market if that's going to be possible. I definitely wouldn't lie if that's not the case. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that- let's, huh? So I was going to say, you know, that happens with like the house that's been on the market for 156 days and all of a sudden your buyers really want it. And there's a, there are like the weather showings that day. How does that happen? <laughs> I mean, I want to call bullshit on that. Like really? I know, but you know, it's like the universe playing, I don't know, wreaking havoc on our business. I don't know what it is. <laughs> 
I don't think it's that. <laughs> I think it is. It's a universe thing. Just messing. It's karma. It's karma. You need some better karma points, I think. All right. All right. Back to our corners. I think so. I think Super. so. We'll take a short break, hear a word from our sponsor, and when we return, we'll have the final punches. Do you have an entrepreneur mindset? Do you believe in the power of building wealth versus just selling houses? There's a new kind of business model for realtors, and you owe it to yourself to see why top agents and teams are aligning their future with the fastest growing real estate company in the world. EXP Realty, tomorrow's brokerage today. For more information or a private discussion, go to the Toe to Toe Podcast Facebook page and send a private message telling us you'd like to learn more about EXP Realty. Welcome back. Now, before we ring the bell for the final round, Jen, you did take this to the streets, right? But we're going to have a little bonus round around this. Yes, they will. I did take it to the streets. It was pretty good. We got a couple of great tips. Heard from Ann Uckman again, which she always has wonderful tips. Love so Ann. Thank Hi, you, Ann. Ann. She actually gave the tip on the, it happened to her with the driveway thing. Oh, yeah. Good yeah. Point. So that was, she had some good thoughts. And then some other great agents around the country. So it'll air right after this one a couple of days later. So check it out on the bonus rounds. Yes. All right. So let's get back into the ring. What do you say? Let's do it. Final round. You have one minute. Give me your highlights of what you think is important before you say yes to multiple showings in your listing. Oh, I was just going to say, hell yes, do it. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) That was it. (laughs) All right. So I would say yes, say hell yes, as long as you have over communicated with your client, depending on which side you're on and make sure everybody is aware of the possibility of that and that they're comfortable with it. Like Like you said, it's just communication. That's all. Yep. Agreed. All right. All right. That's gonna have to be the end of today's battle. I mean, that wasn't even a bat. Like, I don't even know. We didn't even throw a damn punch. We didn't throw a punch, but hopefully they got some good tips on things to think about and as it pertains to their listing or their buyer that could help them. Hope so. Well, just be ready because that just means in episode 27, I'm going to want to like throw it down on you. I don't even know what that that is. All right, guys, go to our Facebook page and comment and, and vote and let us know any other topics you'd like us to talk about. We always welcome that from you guys. You know best what is on your mind and just feel free to share it with us. Yes. And we hope that you enjoyed today's battle. We hope you did hear something that helps you get clarity on your path for your business. Thanks, Monica. Thanks, Jen. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Toe to Toe Podcast. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so you get updates when new episodes are available. And we truly love feedback and would appreciate all likes, reviews, and suggestions for future topics.